Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you a quick and easy way to create long shadows for icons in Photoshop. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how you can create a floral icon like this with a long shadow in Photoshop. We're also going to look at how we can do that with text. And then at the very end, I'm going to show you how you can use this to create a sort of rounded rectangle icon. I'm going to do that for the flower and for the text. When you're looking at these, you may see that they're very pixelated, but that's because they're very small images and I've just got them sized up. When you look at them as small as they are, you're going to see that they're nice and crisp. So if you're ready, let's get started with this effect. To create our long shadows in Photoshop, I'm going to create a new document with File and New. And because I'm creating an icon for the web, I'm just going to make it small. That's also going to save on rendering time. So I'm going to set this to 200 pixels square, RGB color and a transparent background. I'll just click OK. Now I have a blue already selected as my foreground color, so I'm going to fill my shape by pressing Alt Backspace on the PC, Option Delete on the Mac. Let's just zoom in here so we can see how we're working. For this initial long shadow, I'm going to use a custom shape. So I'm going to click here on the custom shape tool, which shares a toolbar position with the rectangle tool. But it's actually the custom shape that I want. And I already have a custom shape selected, so I'm going to use that. I've also made sure that I have shape selected here rather than pixels or path. And I'm going to hold the shift key down as I drag out my shape so that it's constrained to its original proportions. I've also made sure that I have a white fill and no stroke at all. Of course, if you haven't set that before you draw your shape, with the shape still selected, you can go ahead and change those settings. Now we're ready to go to the 3D tools in Photoshop to create our long shadow. While it might look as if this is a confusing process, if you just follow along step by step, you'll find that it's actually pretty easy. I'm going to choose 3D and then New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. There's one for Selected Path, but we're going with Selected Layer. So I'm just going to click that. Now I'm already in my 3D view, but if you weren't in 3D view, you would be asked if you want to go into 3D view and say yes, because you want everything to look pretty much like it does here. Now there are a few steps to go through and I suggest that you just follow them one by one. The first thing is to look at this image up here. And at the moment we're looking at the top of the shape. So we're looking from the top down and we can see that by just looking here. You can see that we're looking from the top down. And what we're going to do is to flip these around. So there's an icon here in the top corner which says Swap Main and Secondary View. So click that. What that does is to put your shape up here and the top view up here. So next we're going to just reconfirm that we have Shape 1 selected here and we're going to tip it back up. And we do that by going to the Properties panel here and the fourth icon in is called Coordinates. So I'm just going to click on that. And what we want to do is set the X coordinate to 90 degrees. So just type 90 in there and press the tab key. And what that does is it tips this shape back upright and you can see the shadow is beginning to form. Now you'll also notice that your shape's got really big and you probably don't want it to be that big. So I go back down into the 3D panel here and choose Current View because we're going to make the view a little bit smaller. Once we've selected Current View, up in the Properties panel, we're going to the camera icon here. It's the 3D camera. We're just going to click on that. There's an option here for sizing it. It says 1 20th. And we're just going to increase that a little bit to make our shape go a little bit more centrally in the background and to make sure that there's plenty of room for it. Whatever you set here is just going to be whatever you need to do to make your shape about the size that you want it to be. Now the direction of the shadow right now is being caused by what is called infinite light. And in real life that's the sun. And it's down here and it's shining in this direction. It would look better if our shadow came out in this direction. So we're going to click here in the 3D panel on infinite light. And now we get this sort of handle here so we can change the direction of our light. So we're going to move the sun around. 
and we're going to position it so that we get the shadow that we want. It's probably going to want to be about 135 degrees. So if I click here at the same time on coordinates, you can see that the X value is around 135. It's actually 136.9. But you can drag that around until you get the result that you like. Now before we leave here, you might have noticed that the white has changed color a little bit. So we want to change it back. And to do that, we're going under the shape options here and we're going to choose the front inflation material. So just click on that. In the properties panel, you have this option here for materials and you want to identify the specular value. It's not diffuse, it's not illumination, it's not ambient, it's specular. So just click in here for specular. And what you want to do is to set that to a white. So you want to go and click on a nice white value and click OK. And now if everything's looking all right, you're ready to go back to Photoshop. But what we have to do now is to turn this sort of draft look into a final rendered 3D version of the shape. And to do that, we need to click on this render icon. Now there's a couple of render icons. There's one in the properties panel and there's one down here in the 3D panel. You just want to hit one of them. And down the bottom here, you'll see that your rendering process is taking place. And you just need to wait until it is complete. This is going to take a long time on a large image but because we're working on a really small image, it's pretty quick to take place. Now we'll go back to the Layers panel once it's completed rendering. And you can see that we now have our 3D layer and our background layer. If we want to see what our image now looks like, just click on this layer here. And this is our image. Now I'm ready to create a icon from this, so I'm just going to right click this shape layer and I just want to rasterize it. So I'm going to choose Rasterize 3D. And what that does is it turns it from a 3D layer just into a regular rasterized image, which is all we need for the web. We could flatten this and then go ahead and save it. Now you can use the same process to also convert words into the look of having a long shadow. I'm just going to turn this layer off. I'm going to type in a word and I'm going to convert it to 3D. I'm going to speed up the process, but essentially I'm just pressing exactly the same keys as I did previously. But you'll be able to see how this can be done. So here's our finished text now with its long shadow. Now this looks a little bit pixelated, but remember that we're working on a 200 by 200 pixel image and I'm seeing this at 300%. So when I shrink it down to 100%, it's going to look nice and crisp. Let's have a look at the other one that we created. And they're looking really good, very simple long shadows, able to be created using the 3D tools in Photoshop. Now if you're interested in how you would finish this off and create it as a sort of rounded square, let's go ahead and do that now. The first thing I'm going to do is to select this layer and I'm going to make it white. So I'm going to press Control Backspace Command Delete on the Mac and that just creates that as a white background. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer and I'm going to put a filled rounded rectangle here. So I'm going to get the rounded rectangle tool here. I'm going to make sure that it's filled with the blue color that I want to use. I'm actually going to make it a slightly more greeny blue. No, not sure about that. Let's go for this one. 
Okay, so now I'm going to start by dragging out my rounded rectangle. I'm going to hold the Shift key so that it is constrained to square proportions. And I'm going to hold the space bar as I just move it into position. What I'm looking for is these guides to tell me that I'm right in the middle of this shape. You could also just align it better later on, but I've got those two guides there, so it's perfect. I'm just going to let go of the mouse button. And now we've got the rounded rectangle shape here with the long shadow. But if I want to clip the long shadow, I'm going to have to create a mask. The easiest way to do that is to go back to this rounded rectangle layer. I'm actually going to rasterize it, so I'll just convert it into a raster layer, and then select the piece that I want to use as a mask, which is just this middle section. Having done that, I'm going to my shape layer here, and I'm going to add a mask to it. You can see now that the rectangle, the rounded rectangle, has been used to clip this shape with its long shadow, so we get a nice looking design. So that's how I created the one that we saw when we first started this video. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel, and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.